another day, another talk, another exploration of dreams. Now, two kinds of benefit. One is, <clears throat> one is very curious. And we only learn about the benefit of dreams by inference. That is, if you terminate people's dreaming, block them from having dreams as they do in some clinics, dream clinics. After a period of about six weeks, people start having episodes of hallucination during their waking hours and they have to terminate the experiment. There's something very, very interesting and profound about that because the kinds of hallucinations they began to have appeared to be more and more in the direction of psychotic. Inference. It's dreams, it keeps us rational. It keeps us in touch with some intelligence. How? Not clear at all. Where does the consciousness go if it's not dreaming? I didn't hear uh, you. Were saying that, you were saying that people in some places were stopping people from dreaming in some instances or something like that. Quite correct. Go ahead. Come on. So what happens to the consciousness when that happens, when they're sleeping and they're not dreaming? It just isn't there. Well, uh, nothing happened to their consciousness when they're not dreaming or they wouldn't be alive. Yeah, they wouldn't be alive. That's what being alive is, being conscious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an element of consciousness that proceeds through, through the uh, deepest dreams and the deepest sleep without dreams. Now look, they can tell, experimenters can tell when someone is dreaming because the eye moves and they call that rapid eye movement. And when they see someone therefore is asleep and they see that their eyes are moving, they know they're dreaming. Wake them up as soon as that starts. Let them go back to sleep. Let that go on for six weeks and they hallucinate. Hallucinate in what direction? It becomes more and more difficult for them to maintain an everyday existence because the intrusion of all of these hallucinations. Some are frightening. Therefore, researchers terminate the experiment. Therefore, there's something about dreams that stabilizes us and allows us to be in touch with some kind of rationality. I call that inference. We learn that by inference that it benefits us. Now, there's another kind of benefit, but it only comes by analysis, by discovering, by engaging the dream and seeking for meaning. So that's the second kind of benefit or path to benefit. Now, let me list a couple of interesting things. If the analysis to, to whatever degree is successful, then you're able to penetrate into the level of meaning. That means that you're able to understand the symbols, their reference, And most interestingly then, you can structure it out. And once you structure it out, you can look for some comparisons both in your uh, present life and past. Therefore, you can make connections with your present and past through dreams. It brings a unity, therefore, to what might exist separately and detached. But it does something else. By doing this analysis, to the degree that it is successful, to that degree you reach meaning, which you can then confirm in your everyday experience, to that degree then, you're following the tracks, you're following the footprints, you're following the method of the dreamer, you're following a method. When you're following a method, 
and you get results, then you're beginning to see that the very process of dreaming, you are close to, akin to, and therefore are learning the very process of the dream organization. You're then understanding how it comes together, and what, re what it represents. Therefore, you are not only, not only becoming close to the very art of the dream master and akin to it, but you're learning the language of the dream master. That is the source of all dreams. Ah. Now, learning that language has an interesting effect because that way of learning is a most interesting way of developing understanding, a certain kind of understanding, which we normally don't access and use. It's so different than what we normally mean by understanding that I wonder whether we might use a different term for it. But in any case, what it presupposes is that each element in the dream can be linked together and the, relations, the key relationships between the dream can be found and therefore there can be an interrelationship, a connection, a connection of parts, an interrelationship all brought together to serve the purpose of meaning. That kind of understanding, you see, when you have to make and have to see how things connect and you have to develop a kind of an exquisite grasp of language and the language of symbolisms, it brings a different kind of understanding and appreciation for the dream master, something higher than you some higher intelligence because you had a struggle to reach it and discover it. Now, what we're going to try to do is see whether in any way it's possible in our talking about dreams or maybe even looking at one of seeing how we can link it to the idea of providence. Now, what is that? That's a very big word. Right? Pro video. Right? Pro before seeing. Right? Video. Video. To see. Right? It's a prior, it's a prior seeing. Right? It's something, it's an activity that, <clears throat> that is higher than and precedes the operation of intelligence. That's what pronoia is, or, or provenance. It's an activity that's prior to intelligence that bestows, that bestows a, a goodness, bestows a goodness upon its objects to the degree that the object can receive it, to the degree that the object is open to it. To that degree, the entree into that goodness is an existing reality. So what is pronoia? Providence. What is it? It's beyond intelligence. It's prior to intelligence. It bestows a goodness to all, to all of its objects. In what way? It's a completely open, free goodness to which anyone can participate to the degree that they are capable of. It rests upon us to enter. It's always there. Now there are basically five images of goodness and we can explore them when we look at a dream. But that means that there is this goodness, that means there's a kind of a higher kind of reality that functions and it has a power because it bestows. If it bestows, therefore there must be an agent, some kind of activity. Therefore, pronoia or providence is a goodness that has an attendant power 
And since it's able to do that, it presupposes an extremely high level of knowledge in order to achieve that. So these are the three primary ideas behind the functioning of providence. Goodness, power, and knowledge. What is it to the degree to which we can access it? It's to that degree it's available to us. Now what we need is one more idea. The limit of our vision is the boundary of the soul. Of our soul's vision The limit of our vision is the boundary of our soul. The soul's vision is restricted, limited by its own imposed belief structures. So the limit of our vision, you see, here's our vision. It's limited. It's limited. It's a boundary. It's a boundary. You can draw a line around it. It's a boundary, and it's restricted and limited by our own belief structures. So these are beliefs false beliefs about the nature of the self and reality. Now everyone has a constellation of these ideas that move about. It's dynamic. It's a dynamic system. And there is always, there is always, and this is kind of remarkable about the nature of man, there's always a possible opening where we can reach out And it's that reaching out for what we think is our good that challenges these beliefs. It challenges these beliefs because they're false beliefs about the nature of the self and reality. To the degree then that you pursue your own good, goodness, to that very degree, some of these ideas then will become dramatically clear, powerful, challenging. And to the degree, therefore, that you can deal with that good you're seeking and at the same time look at that restricting belief, to that very degree, that's the struggle. But to the degree that you're able to overcome this or see through it, if you're able to see through it and gain that good, the good that you gain is providence, is a goodness. You gain providence then? Well, providence, providence is an activity that bestows goodness. Mm -hmm. It's prior to intelligence. Oh. It's prior to intelligence. Mm -hmm. It always, it is always there. Yeah. It's available to us. And we, yes, we access it. Now, I can either talk in general for a while, or we can have a dream and push it. And therefore, if anyone would like to, if you have a dream, let's see if we can see that in what we're doing. All right. Do you have it printed? May I have it? Want to read it aloud? Part of it was 
tape and then the recollection of the tape. Recollection later. Let me dump this. No, I'll put it on this. Let me get another marker. Another marker? No, I, I oh. ah, here it is. Okay, go ahead. Loud? Um, I was, uh, the dream tape said, I was joking around. Pardon me, could you do it again? The, the tape, the transcription from the tape. Yeah. Was, I was joking around with some black lady about going to the bathroom. About going to the bathroom. And I don't know how we ended up on the ocean. Okay. I don't know how we... We ended up on the ocean. It doesn't matter. In a, bo in a boat or a raft. Okay, good, thank you. But what I re just briefly, what I recall, do you want me to recall what I recall about the bathroom scene? Why don't you just read the dream first? Okay, from the tape. Okay. Um, and we kept getting hit by these waves, sometimes big ones. And somebody said, hey, who said we weren't in a storm? Anyway, it didn't seem that it was too bad. Only there was one... I, I didn't understand. Who said we weren't in a storm? Then what happened? Uh, any um, way, it didn't seem that it was too bad. Is that the same comment? No, my, my comment to myself, it didn't seem like the way the situation was too bad. Thank you. Go ahead. Only there was one way we were sliding down, the raft was going down this way, front of the face of the way. Hmm. And I was hanging on to these guys, like I was hanging on to them. Mm -hmm. And I saw that this was a big wave. It was huge. And I said, I think we are just a little bit too out in front of the, of the curve of the wave. And then finally, this kind of huge guy, it wasn't, a, a, it wasn't actually a form of a person, but it was like, it was a, bigger than life in a sense, a bigger than a human being. A huge, I call it a huge guy because it seemed to have a maleness to it, uh, over my shoulder said, when you hit land, start running. Well, when we did hit land, um, I tried to pick myself up. I was kind of using my hands, crawling almost, like bent over. And I didn't think I could make, make it, could make it get up. And finally, the same guy this next, said, stand up, start running. So I started, I stood up and I started running. And I started noticing I have a lot of racing energy. And I just started running. I got into this house though, or something. I'm not sure what it was. And I was way ahead of these, uh, I call them college peep guys, who I was holding on to earlier. And I was going on ahead. Finally, I came to the back door of this house, and I ran, went around to the back gate. I went through all these obstacles, and 
and then there was this older couple. And the woman said, all I needed to do was shoot him in the heart. That's if this wave got too close. It was okay to do that. And I said, I don't think we need to do that. We just need to go about 20 or 30 seconds more, and it'll be okay. And we'll just see, we'll see just how far the wave comes now that we are this far inland. And we were quite a bit inland at this time. And that's what we were facing. We just kept going, and I think we made it beyond the 28 second mark. Um, that's what I had on the tape. Now, I, now you're saying you added to it on reflection? Is that what you're saying? When I got up, yeah. I recalled the first part of it. Go ahead. Uh, I was joking around with some black lady about going to the bathroom. And I pulled out a drawer um, that was like a, a toilet. But then I saw someone actually pull open a door. And I thought, oh, so that's, so it is a regular bathroom. And I kind of felt embarrassed. And I hadn't used it the right way before, somehow. I don't know how that relates. Apparently the door was so ornate, it was, it, to see, it was deceptive. You couldn't tell that it was a door. It didn't look like a door to a bathroom stall. So I opened it, and there were two toilets and plenty of room for privacy. And then there was a ruckus outside. And then it shifted to the dream of the storm, the waves. There were several of us on the raft. Every once in a while, there was a wave. The first one was small, but it showed it was making a nuisance of itself by making us all wet. And we were not worried. The next one was a little bigger, but because we were in a raft, it didn't bother us. The raft went with the wave. It covered us. The water covered us, but it didn't bother us. The next thing, however, was I imagined if that was that, was that way, what would the next one be like? And I thought we would all be separated from the raft and floating in the water. That would have to be a big wave. And then the next thing I knew, I was sliding down the face of a wave. And then it all fits in to the rest of them. Go ahead. What? I was looking. Go ahead. Well, I, it, I was looking at several parts. I was surprised about the door to the bathroom. Um, and that was actually a nice surprise. It wasn't anything negative. It was actually a good. Um, I think the two parts that were really um, bothersome were um, the, uh, 
the exhaustion I felt while I was crawling on the beach before the guy told me to stand up was really running through the obstacles in this house. Like it seems like there's highs and lows throughout the dream. But I seem to make it out okay. I mean, I mean, Therefore, what would you call the dream? Well, it seemed like I, oh, despite all the work and all the stuff, the, the spirit or whatever I called it, it was like a real force. It wasn't a human being that was picking me up and telling me stand up, it was like some force saying get up, stand up. Um, so in that sense I was listening to it and uh, so in that, it was a good dream. It was a what? It was a, it was a success, it Thank was a good dream, a successful good, dream. A success. It was telling right. me that, you know, do right. something. Right. Right. Now, why offer a success dream. Why does the dream master offer a success dream? Oh, okay. Put that aside now. Where would you say the difficulty is or the problem in the dream? You said exhausted. Yeah, the crawling. The crawling and exhausted feeling. The what? The crawling and exhausted feeling on the beach. The crawling and the exhaustive feeling on the beach. That's the crisis, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Right? Talk about that. I thought I knew how to go along the beach. When I got to off I thought I knew yeah, when I how got to go to along. The, when I came down off the face of the big wave, I knew it was going to be a huge wave because I could tell that it was sucking all the water away from the beach. Um, but I had touched the bottom of the, I touched ground um, much sooner than others did. But I thought I knew how to move ahead and I was crawling and grabbing kind of like on, all, on fours, moving my hands to pull me forward. But I was very exhausted, and it wasn't moving me very fast, as fast as I thought I should have been going. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then the same guy just said, stand up. Yeah. Stay with us for a while. Okay. Yeah. Now. I thought that was the best way to move. I thought that I would have been able to move faster by doing it the way I thought it was that way. But I, it wasn't working. And I remember decidedly thinking that in the dream, that I thought it was a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Consider the dream once more. All right. Now, uh, notice where you talked about touching the ground. Now, tell me about the state of mind touching the ground. When we're just coming off the face of the wave. Uh, I was like the way we were sliding and we were in front of the wave and I could see the water had pulled away from the land and so it left kind of a, a, a just a, a layer of water but I knew that it was shallow enough that I could just, it was land underneath so it was like just at the edge of a, you know, the waves when they hit the ground at the beach and so all I did was just start, I just put my feet down and started uh, pulling my hands up in front, crawling up the beach. Right. So all I did 
was put my feet down and I crawled along the beach. Yeah, I was bent over. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. my knees were on the ground. It was like mm -hmm. I was crawling from my, mm -hmm. with my waist down and pulling my hands up. Yeah, and you thought this was best. I, yeah, I thought that would move me faster up the mm -hmm. beach. I mm -hmm. thought that would be the fastest. Uh, I thought that would pull me up the beach faster than. And I was rather surprised it didn't. It was like this. Pardon? You didn't okay. finish the sentence. Then what? Pull you up faster than what? Faster than. Oh. Um. I, I just, I don't know. I don't recall thinking it was maybe another way. Pardon me, you're, I you're don't talking think there was, to yourself. Oh, I'm just trying to, to, ask, to yourself. I don't think that I thought there was another way. I think I just said that was the best way. Oh, okay. I had planned that mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, what we're doing is we're just un we're just staying with two images, and that's where we're going for a while. The one exhausted crawling. The state of mind is that you thought this was best and the fastest way of achieving your goal, which was to get to the safety of the beach and get inland. Mm -hmm. um, see, now we have to stay with the words in order to see a dream. Right? Do you remember what was said by that figure? What was said? Just read it. When you hit land, just start running. That's what I thought he said. Yeah, that's, that's what I wrote what, down. That's what you wrote down, yeah. Okay. So what are you doing in respect to that advice? Thinking I know what to do with respect to that advice. And what does that mean? Um, well, I'm not doing what he's thinking. I, I, not really doing what he's saying. Hmm? Start running. Not really doing it or not doing it? I'm not doing what he's saying. I see. I see. So are you taking that advice? No. 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 I didn't think I could for some reason. No. I didn't think I could for some reason. That, well, you, you didn't take the advice. <laughs> no, because I didn't. You, your feet could hit the, did touch the ground. Yeah. Right. But when I'm you hit you land, know. start running, right? You hit the hit land. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Now the voice comes again and the figure comes again, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And what's the tone now? Same. More, Same? More, uh, more, um, like, do it. Good. No, do it. Um, what's the word? Um, commanding. Stand up. The effect it had on you? Uh, well, I took its advice this time. Mm -hmm. And I noticed I had a lot of energy. I was moving fast. Yeah. I was going way yeah. ahead of yeah. everyone, so yeah. I knew I'd make it. Yeah. When you took the advice, yeah. then suddenly you had all the energy you needed to achieve your goal. Mm -hmm. Ah. In fact, I was surprised. I thought you know, I was surprised. I thought I'd be exhausted again, but I wasn't. I mm -hmm. had more energy. Yeah. Matter of fact, you were ahead of all of the college guys, all oh. of the others. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Good. Good. Now, this is one. This whole episode is two. Then there's a shift in the house, isn't there? Yeah. Yes. What do you think of the couple's advice, second advice? Well, I didn't, I didn't think it was necessary. I mean, the guy was really old and they were dragging, but we were just seconds away from being outside the hit of the wave, I suspected. Yeah. Would you read the <coughs> advice, please? 
uh, the woman uh, said, uh, all I needed to do was shoot him in the heart. That would have been a quick fix. That way he wouldn't suffer, he wouldn't be drowning. Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was, they were both very, very old. Yeah. And he was barely able to move. Yeah. What kind of advice are you getting now? One that doesn't fit the scene. I mean, it, like they were just out of reach of being saved, and she's suggesting that. All, all I need to do is shoot him in the heart. Who's the him? Her husband. What? Her husband. So someone asking you to shoot him. Shoot him. Right. Yeah. Right. There you are. And she's saying, hey, shoot him in the heart. Yeah, it seems like there may have been more there, but I don't That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Interesting advice, right? And your response? Uh, we only have a couple of seconds. I mean, we only have 20 to 30 seconds to get out of the way of the harms of the wave. It didn't seem like we had much way to, much more way, more to go. You leave this drama, you leave this drama, and return to your own. But I was bringing them along. You were bringing these two people yeah. along? They were part of the crew? No, they just came out of the house somewhere. Fine, you're bringing them along with you? Yeah. Okay, then they are not involved in this pursuit. Uh, the issue is dropped, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. I dropped it. I mean, I didn't see a Pardon me. You may not have done Did they have to drop it too? Did she have to drop it too in the dream? Yeah, because I went in. Thank you. Therefore, then, therefore, instead of continuing this, right. you then proceed and they go along with you. Yeah. All right? Good. Then this issue is dropped. Yes. Thank it's you. It's dropped. Fine. And then you go ahead and make this analysis, don't you? Yeah. Right. And what do you make of that analysis? Uh, well, we do need, what is it, 20 or 30 seconds? And you do it in 28. And, and, we just, and we just kept going, and I think we made it beyond the 28 second mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, now you have to judge your estimate, don't you? Now, how good is your estimate in the dream? Well, we're close, but not exact. I mean, like 28 to 30 seconds, I guess. Uh, no, that's not the way you're 20, right. We just need to go 20 to 30 seconds or minutes more, and it'll be okay. And, the, I, and we went beyond the 28th second mark. If you went beyond the 28th second mark, you're getting very close to what? 30 seconds. Thank you. So I was on the mark. Yeah. Yeah. Close to it. Yeah. Okay. Now, one, two, this is the third. All right. The way you dealt with it is the fourth section. Right. And now, as it's most interesting in most dreams, let's just stay with the first scene, please. Well, that was... Uh, what I remember was I was joking around with some black lady about going to the bathroom. I, I don't remember. I just She was just a jovial lady. Just laughing. Go ahead. And... They, there were bathroom stalls, but they didn't, I couldn't, I, the doors weren't visible. Mm -hmm. So it was like we had pulled, it's like we pulled out, <laughs> like the toilet was like a drawer and just came mm -hmm. out. <laughs> and it turned out to be. But they, but actually I saw somebody pull open the door and I saw, oh, there's the stall. Well. 
but it was so decorative. It was very deceptive. Is that episode a success? There was oh. a goal achieved? Yeah, I, yeah, I got it achieved. Mm -hmm. How did you achieve it? You pulled out a drawer? Well, I, I was going to go ahead and... It was embarrassing because it was in public. No. But then I watched somebody. Somebody had come out from one of the stalls, and I could see that the stall was hidden behind all this decorativeness. Right, right, right. Or right. decor. So I said, oh, okay, well, now I can use it. Good. It's hidden. Right. Was that a success? Yeah. Right. right. Were you able to take advantage of what you saw? Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. See, this, this is a success too. One is a success, is it not? Yeah. Two is a success, is it not? Mm -hmm. Right. Three is another crisis, whether or not you should shoot him in the heart or not. Yeah. Right? You ignore it, you go along with them, and you achieve the goal. Four is a success, is it not? Yeah. We need to look at the different kinds of successes that these four episodes represent. And the first, what would you say, is the nature of that success? It's because you were able to do what? Um, well, I wasn't, you know, I, I went ahead and, and, and got involved in the situation. I mean, I, I said, okay, well, this is what I have to do. I'll do it. But then out of that came something that... Let's go over it again, all right? Okay. And stay with the question, okay? First saying, yeah. what was the cause of your success? I was able to do what? Take advantage of somebody's, uh, what I saw. That's right, right? One, right? So you could learn from what you saw, right? right. And the particular interesting thing is, the thing that you saw, you had to see through, you had to see through ornamentation. A lot of it, yeah. Right. I mean, it was just, it just didn't look like a bathroom stall. Yeah, at all. yeah, yeah. Talk about the ornamentation. Well, it was like. Like what? It's like a, it would be like. Reminds me of a cake. A, reminds a you of cake, what? A, decor a, de a decorative, decorative cake. With all the icing all over it, and you never see the cake. You don't get to see the outline of the cake because it's so decorated. Mm -hmm. You don't know where the cake ends and the decoration begins. You don't know where the cake is, right? So it conceals. Is that right? What else? Come on, what other words? Conceals it. Conceals the outline of the door to the stall. Right. I mean, you don't even know it's there. There's no, <laughs> it, and the edge of the, you know, like the door opens and you would see a little crack or something, but okay. it's also covered over with this decoration that you don't see okay. the, end, One. the end of it. Do all. the same thing now with two. What part of two, the raft? Same question, place? same question. If there is a success, success in two, all right, what was responsible for the success? I took, uh, I, uh, I uh, listened to the guy. You listened before. Okay. You listened. One, I didn't listen. One. That's right. Um, See, the word listen is, isn't sufficient, is it? Of course, no. you're listening to sounds. Is that what you mean when you say listen? No. What do you mean? Come on, add something to it, then. Um, 
Well, I tried everything that I knew and saw it didn't work, so this guy, I, I, I had nothing to lose. I had to, you know, it was like, okay. It was like completely exhausting all my, uh, what I thought was the way to go. And so I said, okay, well, I'll listen to you now. Three. Um, I just dismissed them completely. I mean, it wasn't even an issue. I just kind of looked, I think, at the woman and just said, oh, we don't even have to go this way. So the reason that was success because you saw mm -hmm. you didn't need to go that way. No. So I guess that one came from my son. See, uh, for myself, it wasn't. Four. Four. Okay. That was, that was like a test. I can't hear you, please. That was like testing. That test, like we got, we got in 28 seconds, and it was like a conclusion, like um, I wasn't off. my decision in, in going on was right. Do you recall when you first stated the dream and talked about it? You didn't <coughs> have that opinion about number four, did you? No. That's a result of this discussion. In terms of the dream, yeah. how did you judge it? In the dream, uh, in the dream, we just kept going. I think we made it beyond the 28th mark. It was a success. Okay. I think we made it. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Wasn't sure. Do you remember the way you described it a short while ago? Just a few seconds ago, it was a conclusion that I was doing the right, I had done the right thing. Hmm. Okay. It was left um, unclear. A few moments ago, did you, through a series of questions, did you see that you came very close to hitting the mark? Yes. All right, before you came to that discussion and we went through those steps, how did you judge it? I didn't see that. You didn't see that? No. There, therefore. I didn't see that I, had, I was even close to the mark. Right, right. Therefore, how did if you I judge still it? Still had to, I, I felt like I still had to continue doing something. I hadn't realized that I was close to the mark. How close? Uh, two seconds off. How many? Two seconds. No. <coughs> well, beyond. Wait, it's beyond, it's the beyond the 28th second. second mark. So it had to be 29 or 30. That's right. Or more. Right? So there are four successes. Would you tell me how you're judging the fourth well, I in the dream? I, in the dream, how did I judge it? Yeah. Mm. I judged it. I hadn't realized. No, in the dream, um, it was just that I think we made it beyond the 22nd. It was like we had, we had reached our goal. It was like uh, we were safe. I had pulled these people out of it and beyond this, it was pretty, pretty good estimate that the wave wouldn't be as far inland as we have, we were. You're working with two pieces of information. One is the statement of the dream. Right. And the second is your recollection of the dream. My recollection is. Now when you go with the recollection of the dream, yes. right, which you wrote down and gave us, how did you judge it in the recollection of the dream? That I had, that I uh, didn't, I thought I hadn't reached it. I would say I hadn't realized that. The, that I had. That I had actually me, met my mark. Yeah, I met my mark. See. Yeah. 
We want to keep the we want to keep the reflection, right? Our reflections are good. We want to use them, but we don't want to change the content of the dream mm -hmm. or your immediate right reflection on the dream that you wrote. Now, when you look at those four things, what can you tell me? To achieve the first, what, would you, what did you have to do? I had to learn from what I saw. And you had to see through what? A lot of um, a cover up. Cover up? Right. A lot of cover up. You had to see through a lot of cover up? Uh huh. Right, right, right. All right, second. Um, I had to exhaust all my ways before I was willing to listen. <coughs> so your success depended upon? Uh, <coughs> testing all my ideas before I'm willing to... Did you test them or did you have to see that they didn't go anywhere? Well, I test them that they didn't go anywhere. Fine. Sometimes yeah. a test can prove yeah. rather than all disprove. Right. Yeah. Well, this yeah. disproved I, I was right. So you only were willing to take the advice when you saw you that all your own, come on, when you all exhausted all my own direction. Right. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. Third. Uh, you were able to get out of that difficulty because how did you get out of that difficulty? I had, uh, I could, I knew where I was and I knew, uh, uh, I had a good sense about where the wave was and how far I'd come, and I had a pretty good idea of how much further we needed to go. That so may be, I didn't need to listen to this person. Yeah, and because that would have obviously been involved in something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fourth. Uh, indicated that I was on the mark about my um, indication of how far I needed to go, that I was on the mark. Which do you want to deal with? Do you want to deal? Do you want to deal with the dream and your recollection of it? Or this analysis we're making of it? Please. I'm missing what you're asking. Yes, you do. Look here. I think we made it. Wasn't sure. Right. I judged that I hadn't realized right uh, that I had met my mark. Thank you, right? Not the analysis that we're going through. No. So now make a statement about number four. What do you notice about these four different kinds of success your dream is reporting to you? Take the fourth one, that's the one we're on. Well, How are you judging her? Um, <laughs> I know what to do. I'm hey, I know what to do. It. Let's give grades for it, A, B, C, D, F. Right. Okay. All right. How would you grade for the success? Based on that sentence, um, I didn't make it. No, no, you, you, know, you did make it, but I, just, I, um, I hadn't realized I had met my mark. Right. So there is a success, but you hadn't realized you had achieved your success. Is that correct? Yes. So it's not an F. You did succeed. You just didn't realize that you had missed the mark. Okay, oh, whatever. I see. I see what you're right. saying. Right, okay. okay. Three. Right. Contrast. You didn't need to go on that tangent, is what you said a moment ago? No. You knew where I was and where I was going? Mm -hmm. Clear? Yeah. Is that clearer than four? Uh, yeah. That's yes. Clearer. clearer than four. Three, two. Come on. That's clearer than four. But you had to wait until. Exhausted all my directions. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still clearer than four. Yes. Are there different ways of looking at success? Yeah. Now, if this dream relates, if this dream relates to her everyday world, would you not agree, if it does relate to her everyday world, then there should be some correspondences in her everyday world. One, two, three, four. Then we should then be able to explore with you 
Say. That was a very interesting way you describe that decoration. You go for the sign and unpack the sign in order to discover its meaning, because it's a metaphor, right? OK, you called it decorative, it concealed. You weren't able to determine what's there, it was so decorative. Couldn't even see the outlines of the door. Mm -hmm. You called it a cover-up. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, I did. Ah, so come on, let's make a statement. If this parallels your everyday world, then you were able to see through a cover up. Cover up. Right. Mm -hmm. And what helped you is that you saw someone else who pulled the door open, as it were. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So you're able to, to see through the cover up, mm -hmm. the decoration, what obscured it, all of that. Right. Because someone else helped you, right? They opened up the door, and you were able, therefore, to take a look at that and recognize that's what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Hi. Good. If two relates to your everyday world, please continue it. Then um, I am doing something and uh, have exhaust, have tried to believe that I have the right direction, but find that none of them work, and have seen that, and um, finally taken the direction that has been advised. Ah, so you s then in your everyday world, you're playing out all kinds of strategies of your own. Right, they're not working. They're not working, and now you try? To take the advice of somebody who... Yeah, and that allows you to succeed. Three. Um, I have a certain direction I'm going. Somebody comes in and tries to take it away or to distract it, or get or you, or, or get you in, in into to, to get you involved into something violent. Right. Something violent. Shoot him in the heart. Something violent. But do you take that option? No. Because you now know where you're going and you can pursue. Right. Right. So you avoid a violence. Uh -huh. Right. Urged on by another. Mm -hmm. right. You avoid it. Good, 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 good. And four? Uh, four is, um, mm -hmm. I, it's like I, I reach my goal, but I don't see it. That's right. I hadn't realized. I met my mark. Therefore, four is a success that is there, but not seeing, it. not seeing it. Now, that happens to be the major motif through the whole dream, isn't it? Mm -hmm. hmm. A lot of seeing, different kinds of seeing. Different kinds of seeing. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Now, that's a curious figure. Yeah, it is. It was. Uh, Go ahead. I mean, it was like not a figure. Yeah, go ahead. It was like a force of some sort. Mm -hmm. And it, I knew it was really magnanimous. I mean, it was like, it was almost like a, I call it a spirit because it didn't have any human force, humanness to it. I mean, human figure. Yeah, that's good. Um, but it was a male, I considered it male like. Um, Powerful. Powerful. Really powerful. Powerful. And now you and, are. And, and kind of a, it almost had a, I don't know if I were, this is my interpretation, but it's just like, it's just a stubbornness to it. It was, it was not going to be, I mean, it just had a, it, like it was stubborn in the sense that it, well, it wasn't going to let me do what where I was going to go, where I wanted to go. It wasn't going to give up. It wasn't going to let me fool around in my own game. It, 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 you know, you, 
<laughs> was <laughs> like stubborn in the sense of, um, no. well, I'll, I'll watch you do this, but no. you're not going to get through to me. You're not going to change me. It's not a me that it was changing. It was not a human figure, but it was like it couldn't be a, uh, changed. So you gained an ally. It was an ally. You gained an ally, but the only way you could listen to that and appreciate that voice is when you finally used up all my uh, directions. Right. It was a. It was a, a an excellent friend. Would that be nice to know that you have such a friend that occurs in your dream? Whoa! No kidding. Somebody like that. <laughs> that was. Yeah. yeah. Telling me that uh, you know if you want to get out of harm's way, you listen to me. Yeah. So. Now, these are the four. Mm. We're saying, if this has any parallel in your everyday world, are you involved in any struggles? Yeah, several, yes. What would happen if this is true? Well, there's a part of me that's on my side. Mm -hmm. A very nice part, a very good part. Mm -hmm. um, spiritual part. Mm -hmm. Good friend. Uh, what did you have to do to listen? Listen in that sense of acceptance. Um, try out all my ways. Bottom them out of your own. Believe that I knew what was going on. Right. I had like to try out every possibility. Right. And find that it isn't working and then right. finally listen. Then totally exhausted, then a breakthrough can occur and you got that advice. And it seems like that's what I keep doing. I, I exhaust. I, I think I know where I'm going to go, and I exhaust it, and then I listen, and then I see that I actually have more energy. Now, if you could take a look, <coughs> if you could take a look at this psychological state of exhaustion, you want to try out all your possibilities. Would you not agree you're, you're paying quite a bit for that? Yeah, I am. A lot. Hmm. But... You found a way with your spirit friend. Uh, as long as I listen. Yeah. Now look here. If this applies in your everyday world, mm -hmm. then what did we say? It's interesting that you're seeing through a cover-up by being able to see someone get out. Right. Look here. Second, right. you're able. You are able finally to accept some. But what's some, in some, some wisdom, some, some, I mean, it was, um, it knew what it spoke, it, it was, it, it knew what it was talking about. On the other hand, it's helpful. on the other hand, it was obvious. <laughs> it was obvious? Yeah. You know the ground was there. Yeah. What are you crawling for? Because I thought I knew how to move fast. That's right. But on the, on the obvious level, it was obvious. Your solution was to crawl. Now, we're going to stay on those words, right? Your solution was to crawl. Right. Yeah, come on, talk about it, that state, come on, use that word. My solution was, was to, to crawl. Go ahead, what is that like, what does that mean? I remember. Similes, what is it like? Go ahead. Mm, it's a struggle. It's like going up a, a hill that's sand, like sand. Mm -hmm. And as you're using your hands, it's mm -hmm. not, uh, it, it, you're sliding down. You're going backwards. Because as you're grabbing, your hands just. Yeah. Now watch. You. Okay. Keep that. Keep that. All right. That's what we mean by crawling in this dream. That's crawling. What's crawling? That image in that dream. You know the state of mind that accompanies it? Yeah, a lot of exhaustion and stroke, uh, futility. Look here. Could you tell me, without giving me any details, does that, does, is that something going on in your life? Yeah. Could you identify it? As to a, to, let's call that, uh, 
one and its complement A. So you could represent, and you know what we're talking about when we say 2A, that's that state of mind that you face in your everyday world. Huh? Say, there was someone trying to urge you to get involved in this struggle and perhaps resort to violence, and you saw through it and saw your own way. Yeah. Is, I know where that one goes. Thank you. Right? 3A. Four. That's the hard one. Yeah. That's the hard one. That one I don't know. But we've got it. We got it. We don't have to worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please read from the, the material this remark. All right, the 20 and 30 seconds. Both the statement and watch the reflection on it. It was okay. I said, I don't think we need to do that. We just need to go 20 to 30 seconds more. It will be okay. We'll see just, we'll see just have to see how far the waves come now that we are this far inland. Thank you. Repeat it again. We'll, we'll see. Just, I think it's we'll just have to see how far the waves come now that we are this far inland. What is that? What kind of an action is that? What are you doing when you're doing that? <clears throat> kind of seeing, waiting, what, whether my judgment was correct or not. Yes, waiting. What are you doing when you're waiting, when you're making that kind of a statement? Seeing. Uh, Read it again. We'll, we'll see, see. We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see how far, far the, the waves, waves come, come. Now that we are this far inland. Now that we are this far, inland. we can now look back and see how far those waves came. Right. Right. Ah. ah. Well, it's it's like we'll have to see how far the waves come now that we are this. It's like to see... Now that we have gone this far... It'll, it's a question of how far the wave will come. That's right. But when are you willing to see how far? After I go be, After, after you've gone, gone that certain distance, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. When you reach this distance, then you can turn around and look, can't yeah. you? Right? And I don't think... And then you'll be. see how far the waves came. Agree? Yeah. Especially this big one. It's like a, a sumi wave or one of those big... Yeah. Yeah. Tsunami. Tsunami waves. So. so, now that you're farther alert, along, now you can see just how far that wave came. That down, that whatever the wave is. Mm -hmm. Now you can see how, come on, put other words on it. Um, I can see how what? How far along? How far along? Uh, you can now gauge what? Uh, where I am with respect Where you are. Wave. Now you can see where you are and where... The wave is. Ah! Mm -hmm. Ah! Because we're, I think we're beyond it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you didn't have to run that far. Uh... Oh, that's, that's, that's all right. Okay. That's all right. Mm -hmm. But you are now willing to say that you can turn around after this and judge that, aren't you? Uh-huh. Right. Say, is there something going on in your life now that now that it's gone certain distance, you can turn around and better look at it? Uh-huh. Yeah, for sure. I've seen, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's something wrong about that. You're not doing what? I'm not sure whether I've hit the mark or not. When in fact, Looks in terms like of the dream... It's saying that I'm doing... I've hit the mark. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty hmm. close to it. Now I can turn around and reflect on it. Ah, oh, well, well we've, I've been. look here, we spent a little few minutes on a dream tonight, right? <laughs> right? Now, is there any advantage in seeing these things in your daily life through this dream? Share the joke. Come well, on. because I have not had a good dream. Um, well, not a good 
after a good drink. I haven't had, <laughs> I haven't had, a, good had a good drink. drink. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean they're, all, they're all good to go. Yeah, That's, right. Yeah. I haven't remembered a dream for some time. And I was so tired. I remember he said, I am so exhausted about everything that's going on. I just would love some of the help right now. Mm -hmm. And I remember before I went to sleep, I said, I, maybe my dreams will help me. And that's where this came from. <laughs> Let me ask you again. So, um, did you um, enjoy going over this? Yeah. Uh, what was it like seeing the way it might apply in your everyday world? Well, it's kind of funny. Number three is, is really a personal one. Okay. And it really uh, hit home, to tell you the truth. All right. I think that was a phone call to a friend or mother. Yeah. Well, look. look. And, uh, that was good, actually. It's nice. I, I, I think I dealt with your phone. It's nice. Hmm. Let's, let's I'm look still at at uneasy about uh, two, though, and one and two. I mean, waking up, I mean, it's a, it was a really good dream, and I feel very grateful that I could have some, some help like this, but I feel like I'm not, you know, in my waking world, I feel like I'm, I am not using it to my best advantage. Oh. Look, there, the look here, look here, look here. Don't worry, there's always room to criticize whatever you're doing. Always wait until the last, though, before you do okay. that. Right? Or let your friends do it, because you know, right. they, they're good at it, too. All right, now go back. You had the dream, you wrote it down, right? you recorded yeah. it, you offered it tonight. Right. Did you talk about it to anyone? No, I haven't talked to you. All right, we put it on the board, we did this work, we asked you to see whether there are any comparable scenes in your everyday world. And now we're interested in what it's like to look at your everyday world through the eyes of this dream. Oh. <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, I drop my everyday world, enjoy the dream. <laughs> okay. I mean, because my vision of it through the eyes of my everyday world. If I, if I understand what you're saying, maybe I don't. That's okay. So, in order to be able to say that you benefit, or there is any benefit at all, okay. all right, let me take a, let's take a moment out. That means you have to be able to locate your position. Here, wherever that here is. That means you should be able then to see what's above you, what's below you. Because, you see, maintaining what we are means we keep, we keep, maintain. We maintain, we keep, we maintain the good we've achieved. That's what it means. And we're still struggling for something higher. Right? And we have to see what we have to do to reach that. Otherwise, you have no direction. You're just hoping. Now, that's an interesting thing, you see. Uh, This is called protection. Right. When you know where you are and you know what you have to achieve, you know the assets, you know the difficulties you have, then that allows you to go forward with a certain kind of psychic protection. I'm going to use this language for a moment. All right. Now, uh, to reach that higher, to reach that higher, you want to hold fast to it. You want to be able to maintain it, right? the higher. See, when you reach out for something higher, you don't want to be in the situation where, even though you've reached it, you're, uh, you're having difficulty admitting that you've reached it, there's a conflict about holding on to it. So therefore, there's a certain interesting thing that we need for this curious idea of benefit, and that is, that is called perfection. 
Perfection is the willingness to hold fast to it, the higher. That's what it's called. Now, to do that means we have to face what's blocking us, holding back to, to uh, false beliefs about yourself and the world about you, right? That's what's below us. All right. And what we need to do in some way is to lift ourselves out of the lower to go to the higher, right? We need to lift from those false beliefs to the higher. or uh, lift to the higher. Right. That's another way of putting that is purifying or purification. That's what the word means. Right. To lift to the higher, to be able to lift whatever it takes to lift to the higher. Now, you can't do that unless you're willing to turn about and face yourself. That's what it takes. You have to be honest. You have to be willing to face yourself. You have to be able to face what's going on. Because life is, is terribly profound. It's not a trivial dance. This turning about sometime is called remission. In uh, Christian thought, they took this idea from the Greeks and the baptism for the remission of the right? baptism, a baptism for the repentance for the remission of sins. That's the same word, aphesin. It's a turning, right? And it also is a turn about. So it's a metanoia. It's a turning about and freeing. So it's freeing from the lower, turning about, which is a metanoia, right? Which is a uh, some curiously translated repentance. But look here. That's only possible if you get in touch with a certain kind of vitality. Because this game takes vitality. You gotta get somehow, you gotta get some energy. You gotta get some energy. Well, let's see whether we can apply this here. And to be able to maintain the good that you've achieved and yet to reach and struggle for something that's important to you. That's called protection, right? To be able to hold fast to the higher in that struggle and recognize it as higher, perfection, right? To be able to get out of the beliefs that block you from recognizing what you see, that's purification. To be able to do that means you're going to have to face these doubts. That's a turning about, facing those doubts. One of the tests of this whole game, by the way, it's a curious one, is that when, when these curious beliefs block us, it dams up It actually dams up energy, good old vitality. It dams up energy. It blocks it, see, because it's forces to keep everything on its own level. Therefore, when beliefs are seen through, therefore that energy now is displaced from its former function and it becomes available to the individual. And therefore, it now can be used towards the higher and more perfect goal, which is philosophy. Now, these five things classically are each a kind of goodness. When you talk about goodness, you talk about something that benefits the object who receives it. Now, goodness is naturally communicated, naturally communicated, no restrictions to it. It's available to anyone who's open enough to receive it. 
It's an outflowing, it's an, an outgoing flow of goodness, pranoya. And it manifests itself in these five ways. And these five ways, therefore, if you can then see how they function right here in this dream, you should then be able to see the dream and talk about it now in that language and see whether talking about it and seeing it through these terms benefits you. Right? Now, remember I asked you what was it like to, to compare the dream work we did with your everyday world and you said you could see certain things about it and through it? In the same way, What's it like now going through what we just did, both in seeing your dream and seeing your everyday world? Well, I do recall the idea of protection um, after the spirit, after I started running on the beach, mm -hmm. like he told me. It was like I knew what, you know, it was like I wasn't afraid anymore. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I had to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a lot of energy, vitality yeah. in yeah. doing it. See? Um, mm -hmm. I gave up my belief about the exhaust, the way to go, which is purification. Yeah, training about purification. And yeah. I was holding fast to an idea mm -hmm. to the end because I said this is what I needed to do. So that, I mean, I held yes. on. Yes, yes. But I see what I was doing during, the, what I need to do during the day. Mm -hmm. um, like what kinds of states of mind I need to hold on to. Mm -hmm. I keep giving up mm -hmm. um, because of the beliefs. And it's a, it's a struggle. It goes back and forth. Yes, because, because beliefs limit our vision. And that binds us. That puts a boundary to what we are and what we see. And I don't believe right. it. You know, it's like I don't believe that that's... It's very difficult finally to say, hey, maybe this little thing, I mean, everybody knows what a belief is. They're trivial. They're not like rocks and stones and mountains and grass, right? I mean, they're just an idea. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. More powerful than anything else, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Powerful than yeah. whatever Superman was. Now, behind this is a whole interesting metaphysics. Now, here's the real problem for man, I think. Is it worthwhile seeing how all of this fits together into a unity? That is, if, this is, if what we're saying can be said at all, then what can be said is that there is somehow some source of dreams, which we call the dream master, that is, in fact, acting through these categories for your good, using your life, using all of those images, communicating to you in a very, very beautiful and simple way with great utility, efficiency, insight. Yeah, image is good. Then it may be that we might be able to risk a good statement. The dream master is the function of providence. And providence is something that has often been said to be akin to the divine. Therefore, a man gets in touch with the highest aspect of the divine and that sense of which what he needs most benefits him. That's the most important part about it. In the area where he needs help, in the area where his own development is blocked, where he needs help, the dreams then give us that kind of help and benefits us, not by giving solutions, but by just holding up a mirror so you can see both yourself and your everyday world. That's right, it didn't give me a solution. No solution. It presented my state of mind mm -hmm. and what I was, you know, what I, I have to do mm -hmm. with respect to the state of mind, the beliefs that I have. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, he, it sounds like he's telling me something like stand up, do something, but what does that mean? No. Oh. It doesn't, it means what you already know. <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah. <laughs> and I'm saying, yeah. that's not going to work. I'm going to do this other. Yeah. Good. Well, 
Let us see now. What? Back to the beginning. We're saying there's a benefit to dreams. There's a role providence is playing. Right? It's prior, right? It understands so much. It has vast intelligence. It extends a goodness and power and knowledge, most specifically to benefit us in the most interesting psychic way possible, which is in our own development, our own spiritual development. Right? Now, we went through an analysis. We sought the meaning. We went through the symbols and the structure of the dream. Right. Does that mean, therefore, we're learning the language of the dream master? We're learning how to see how the dream may be composed and what it relates to? If so, then we're learning the language of the dream master. And that's the language of providence. Thank you. Uh, one minute. 28 seconds. <laughs> Want it end at nine? Right? <laughs> Just beyond me. <laughs> okay. Any anything you would like to talk about for a while? Wow, nice. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Yes. This is all Greek philosophy, as you know. Hmm. This is this comes out of Proclus, Plato, Plotinus, with a little twist little adaptation. So the five qualities of goodness are the protection and perfection and purifying the mission of that quality? Yes. Do you sometimes call remission reversion? Or reversion? Yes. Remission, reversion, turning about. Yes, that's true. Yes. Thank you first for volunteering. Thank you. In this, in this, where, where does the power fit in? You have, we see the goodness. Well, any action, would you not agree, if you wanted to get someone to put this, this is really a multimedia production. A dream is a multimedia production. Yeah. Must that not take something to put that together? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. What must it presuppose? Some kind of vast knowledge about you, about yeah. structure, about meaning, about language, about how images must fit together. It must have a very keen mind for a dramatic presentation of material, must it not? And a power to do it, do it for your benefit. benefit. That is what are called the primary powers of providence. Try it. You mentioned that munition was a term that was used in mm -hmm. Christianity, Catholic, or well, for the remission of sin. Yes. And that, um, so I was curious about how you saw its function in that tradition. In the Christian tradition? Yes. Yeah. Well, they, they, they have a particular problem, and that is they've translated these key words back in the beginning of, of the 17th century, 16th century English. And they're tied to it, and they can't change the language. No longer means what it used to mean. But remission should mean to free. Right? Repentance should mean to turn about the inward mind of man. That's what it should mean, to turn about, metanoia, right? To turn the inner mind around, especially that part of the mind that's capable of vision. Well, pardon me, it would have to be used by someone who knew the Greek, That's right. written in the Greek. That's what they would read. Okay. Right. Right. It's when it went into English, into that form, and now people want to preserve that language that obscures the profundity that lies there. Mm -hmm. Like Amar Khanna, right? Yes. The concept of sin being, is, they yeah. translated sin was, all, was the concept of missing the mark. That's right. Now, th see, this is missing the mark, literally. Right? I hadn't realized. I hadn't realized I... Hadn't made it, but I thought I... Had no, look at your language. 
hadn't realized I had met my mark. Right. So that's she it. missed her mark. Mm -hmm. She hadn't realized that she hit it. Right. She thought she missed her mark. See, that's the language of the soul. But when you use the word sin, it no longer has that, it can't carry that because it carries a lot of other meanings which are different. But we don't really know what tech, what practices they might have been involved in such that they would have used um, turning about as repentance, do we? That's really the yes, of what Yes, I'm yes, since that language is stoic and it's found in, uh, especially in uh, Rufus, Musonius, uh, Rufus and Epictetus, we know it has a history. We know it existed for those people in that age, and especially the age that lived concurrently with the ministry of Jesus. Wandering uh, teachers who lived a certain lifestyle very akin to Jesus, their manner of delivery, their teachings, they used that language. That was the language they used before. Yeah. And also it meant that they had to have some keen insight into Philo the Jew or Philo of Alexandria. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I would enjoy talking about it, but... Um, you don't have quite that much. <laughs> oh, so I have a question then. Um, so are all terms that are found in dreams by definition the language of the soul? Is that the vocabulary of the soul? Mm -hmm. You see, if we had some time, the real thing to do now would to go back into the dream and see exactly the significance of the black woman who was jovial, right? Mm -hmm. The college people in the raft, the kind of raft it was. See, so go through it to find out from her the kind of associations and the background that she has in respect of all of those. Pull it out so that therefore you're not looking at the symbol, you're now looking at what it means and then you read the dream through those levels of meaning and that gives you an entirely, uh, not entirely different, but a, but a entirely deeper meaning. Which one do you want to look at? Well, I have another question coming up. Oh, okay, do the other one. Go ahead. Um, I have a kind of a problem when you say that the limit of our vision is the boundary of our soul. I have a problem with the thought that the soul is bounded. Like, the soul has this boundary, and so we're limited. Yeah. I always thought that we would be limited, and that would cause the soul to be bounded. Okay, I'll take that. Um, right. You have two, two languages. You have the you and the we. I but so, can you discover the boundaries of the soul by the limitations on its language in your own personal brain? I think what might be interesting, if someone could get a device, a device, <laughs> that could list all the possible beliefs that anyone can have and all of the forms in which it could, ha could take. Yeah. And then in some way allow someone to walk through this vast museum of these ideas oh, and click, you know, say, oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> and that would, that would become, you could probably make a geographical model of it. Uh, okay. A geometric model at least. You know, if you put all of those parameters down, possible, yeah. Yeah, I can see where it go there. Just, um, you know, I, I too had a question about the language of dreams, and this is kind of on the level of um, when you're learning the language of the dream master, are you are you learning to take as a whole the what the image means to you, its personal content, and its relationship to them? I guess I, I'm wondering about that. Like, we can definitely explore a particular symbol, or, or all the particular symbols, and see how they have a personal uh, unity. They have a, a unity in Virginia. For, but um, I guess I was wondering, when you say learn the language of the Dream Master, I think, I just thought you might need something more than that, in, in the sense of, you know, are you learning to um, pull it together differently? Like, I, like when we look at it, we kind of look at it as pictures and words, and Feelings, right? Mm -hmm. And yet you're saying that that particular picture has a certain history and has, has a mm -hmm. content beyond the picture of it. But we're not used to looking at the images of our dreams in our traditional sense as having that. Mm -hmm. you kind of, I, I'm having a little trouble expressing. Well, I'm I guess a, I just want to know, is there another language of the dream? way you talk about understanding or learning how to understand like the dream master understands? 
than Yes. That's why I use the terms metaphor and simile. Yes. Once you've gone through dreams like this again and again and again and again and again, and you follow the same methodology, which is what I do all the time, then then you recognize that there's a there's a rational design in the selection of the images. And they are put there as metaphors. And the states of mind they represent are like similes. And it fits into an analogical structure which relates to the everyday world. Therefore, the language you're learning is the language of high drama. A special kind of drama for the benefit of the soul, not for entertainment with your own personal development. And the more, the more you, you become aware of this, it's not a question of belief, the more you're aware that dreams function in this way. Uh, one night when you have nothing else to do, offer up a glass of wine to your dream master as a toast. Because very profound and, uh, and noble, artful, Astonishing with its profundity, clarity, precision, highest art form. So when you learn the language of the dream master, you may become, uh, uh, when you drop dead, there's a, uh, a place for jobs and you can look up there and you can look for an apprentice to a dream master and you can see whether or not you might be hired. Well, because very busy, you know, six dreams a night as the average people have. And how many times people are, or how many days the dream master must be working. Right. Right. Sleep. right, so he never gets any sleep. Could you compare like the art of Homer with the art of... Oh, yes. Oh, just, oh, absolutely. Because I know the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a high art form. Yes, art. yes, yes. And Homer is the greatest mm -hmm. in terms of the ability to deal with those ideas consistently, to show higher values, to show the human drama in order to benefit man. The whole, the whole Homer is to benefit man. Future ages. Let us sing the song for the future ages. Yeah. Yeah, so he is functioning providentially for the benefit of the future ages. Yeah. yeah. That's a Greek dream. Yeah. So that becomes a Greek dream. Yeah. That's a real culture. So when you have a collective dream you can all work on, or drama you can all work on, that has an integral uh, structure of great beauty, and harmony, balance, rhythm, all that kind of great stuff. Well. So, uh, by the dream master and the Greek guy, no, because you see, the dream master is a function. It's a function of something, and the notion of the one is is not a function. A function is something that has to be done. It's a work. It's an activity, and therefore, whatever uh, what they call in the declension of terms, it goes from the one. Right, to oneness, to unity, to whole, to perfect, you know, a whole declension of terms that follow from it. In the same way, on the side of good, there's equally good, goodness. And of course, it's said that the one and the good are the same. But uh, the second, meta see, the, the first metaphysical creation is goodness, from the good goodness. The activity of goodness is provenance. And there are only two principles you need in order to understand providence, limit and unlimited. Right. Because providence is unlimited in its scope, right? right? And limited in its ability to focus precisely in respect to each of the individuals for whom it is its object, to whom it addresses its art. Right. So it's an expansive and it's a limit. And that's the function of the dream master. But providence is it entirely. This only gives us this gives us a drama to unfold, right, for uh, present, past, and future. If you take the totality of all dreams, 
and the skill behind that totality of all dreams, you would have then that knowledge simultaneously as a whole, that's providence. Because when you have a simultaneity of a whole, with all of the parts interrelated on a harmonic level, then that's a simultaneous whole. In Greek thought, that's also the definition of eternity. Therefore, providence is in the realm of eternity. That's metaphysics. We do that next time. Great. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.